In this video, I'll give you some tips for solving the Alex problem called identifying the correct sketch of a compound in aqueous solution. To help you solve this problem, you are going to want to have access to a periodic table. I recommend Alex's periodic table because of the color coding for metals and nonmetals. That's going to be helpful in this problem. You're also going to want to have access to a table of polyatomic ions, and I am using the table from the website Socratic.org. Uh, for this problem, you're going to be given the formulas of two different compounds and you're asked to uh, pick a sketch. You're going to have eight different sketches to choose from. You're asked to pick a sketch that correctly portrays that compound if it were dissolved in water. And when you're looking at this Alex problem, it's just going to look like this. Uh, what I've done is kind of screenshotted multiple times and copied and pasted all of the different sketches that I got for this particular problem. One of the things that's kind of interesting is for me, uh, all eight of these sketches were exactly the same for the two molecules. Now, one thing that you're not going to get in this problem is any kind of key that explains what the different colors represent here. Uh, so it's not going to tell you what the yellow represents or what the green represents. And you actually don't need to know that for this problem in order to be successful. So again, we're looking for the sketch that correctly portrays this molecule if it was dissolved in water. There are some water molecules in each one of these sketches faded in the background. We're going to ignore those. We're not focusing on those at all. Uh, and so before we tackle picking the correct sketch, the first thing that you need to do is classify these two compounds as either being molecular or ionic. And I'm going to squeeze a little definition in here. A molecular compound is one that is made up of atoms that are all non-metals. So this is a molecular compound is going to be a bunch of non-metals. There is an exception to that. I'm going to put a little asterisk by it. I will talk about the exception at the end of the video. An ionic compound is a compound that contains a metal, a metal, and a non-metal. So this is why the periodic table is handy. Um, to help us classify these two compounds as molecular or ionic. Now, the reason that it's important for us to know if the compounds are molecu molecular or ionic is because these compounds behave differently when they are put in water. A molecular compound is one that stays together. It stays intact when it gets dissolved in water, so the atoms don't split apart from each other. An ionic compound is one that separates into cations and anions. So we're just going to write separates. Uh, I don't really have room for writing out cations and anions, so I'm just going to put positive, the positive sign and the negative sign. Uh, mm, that's I'm changing my mind. It separates into its ions. Okay, so let's uh, begin by classifying each one of these compounds. The first compound that we're looking at contains carbon atoms, hydrogen atoms, and chlorine atoms. Let's classify those atoms. Let's go over to the periodic table. We have carbon, we have hydrogen, and we have chlorine. Those are all nonmetals um, because they're all yellow on the periodic table. I can see that they're all nonmetals. That means that this is a molecular compound and the atoms in this molecule, CH3Cl, they are all going to stay together. So that means I am looking for a sketch that has a total of one, two, three, four, five different atoms that are all attached, five atoms attached. And um, I should be able to see something that reflects this color coding, like there's gonna be one single atom of one color for the carbon. There's gonna be one single atom of a different color to represent the hydrogen. And then there's gonna be three atoms of the same color to represent the three chlorines. And as I'm looking through these sketches, it looks like, boom, here it is. That's exactly what I'm looking for. I'm looking for, uh, I've got a total of five atoms. I've got three of the same color to represent the chlorine. One of these is the carbon. One of these is the hydrogen. I don't really uh, need to know what the different colors represent. So it is, um, you know, as easy as that. That's not quite so bad. Let's take a look at the, the second molecule that I have here. This is BrCl. First thing that we want to do is classify, is it molecular or is it ionic? So we're going to go to the periodic table and we're going to find... Um, bromine, which is right here, and chlorine, which is right here, again, both non-metals. So that means uh, that it is molecular and it's going to stay together. That means that I'm looking for a picture that has two atoms that are attached, still attached to each other, and they're going to be two different colors, and it looks like it's just right there. Like, that's just, that's the first one that I see. Uh, I am 
not going to be distracted by uh, other pictures on here. I'm just, as soon as I find the one that corresponds, I'm going to go with it. So let's talk a little bit about what these other pictures could possibly represent, just in case, you know, uh, for the Alex problems that you're looking at. This would be some type of molecule, molecular, not ionic, because these molecules are all staying intact. This would be something that has a total of four different atoms, one atom of one type and three atoms of another type. So it could be maybe something um, like NCl3. I don't know, something like that. Uh, this is another example of a molecular compound. We've got these three atoms that are just staying intact. This would be one that has one uh, atom of one type and different atoms of another type. And I'm having a hard time thinking of any example uh, other than H2O. That's definitely not what it represents. Um, but that's another molecular compound. This would be an example of an ionic compound. So in this, we have... Uh, substances that are separating from each other, they're not staying together. Remember the definition of an ionic compound is that it is a metal and a non-metal and then they separate into ions. So this could be something like NaCl. If we go to the periodic table, we would see that Na sodium is a metal and chlorine is a non-metal, which means that they would separate and we would see one color corresponding to the cation and we would see a separate color corresponding to the anion as they separate. And so this would be another example of an ionic compound. So would this, another example of an ionic compound. Basically, if all of the atoms or all of the, the representations here are not exactly the same, then you're looking at an ionic compound. Here, uh, all, the, all the little pictures were exactly the same. So this is another example of an ionic compound, two different types of ions. Uh, now, uh, the one thing I want to go back to is this little asterisk. A molecular compound is one that contains only nonmetals. The one exception to that would be a compound that contains the ammonium cation. That's a polyatomic ion, and that is ionic. So any compound that contains NH4 as the polyatomic ion is an ionic compound and it is going to follow the rules of separating into cations and anions.